Hello and welcome to another Critique the Community. We are here with the world's finest architectural photographer, Michael Kelly. Is this my grandmother, Michael Kelly? I don't know, I thought it <laughs> sounded more uh, Michael, official. get over here. Yeah. We're currently in LA, we're filming more projects with Mike and uh, it was Mike's idea for us to come out here in the middle of a wildfire. <laughs> Everything around here is literally was, like hazy and orange, it's awful. It wasn't my idea for them to come. Yes, During it a was. Wildfire, yes, it no, was. Some stooge was throwing a gender reveal party and sent fireworks into the dried grass behind their house, which has now ignited a 27,000 acre fire just miles from downtown Los Angeles. Say, happened like a two days ago, and now you're here and I'm waiting for you. Is, is that truly what happened? Very it true. just happened like two days ago? Like two days ago, yeah. I thought it happened weeks ago oh, when we were booking well, our flights. There were fires in Northern California mm. that were going on for weeks. I know that. So you knew the fires were on their way, <laughs> as were we, but you didn't warn us. In typical F-stoppers fashion, you emailed me and said, we're coming out, get ready. <laughs> Clear in, your calendar. In typical Mike <laughs> Kelly fashion, we've been trying to do this for two years, and he's like, how about September? How about next September? And finally, September's rolling around, and I'm like, we're doing it. And he's like, why don't we just push it enough? No, we're not pushing it and again, we're coming. And he didn't say, oh, by the way, my town is on fire. Anyway, we're supposed to be doing a critique here. <coughs> oh my God. Speaking of fire, the dust. <laughs> yeah, like, it's horrible. Horrible. Yes. God. Do you need, do you need? Yeah, give me some water. Oh, come on, man. If you want to be part of the next critique, you, you came up with a good idea. Stories in a photo. I think we've actually done this before. We've probably done it multiple times, but it's a good one. So explain what you mean by this. The photo must tell a story in the image. It can't just be a picture of a bug. I mean, that might be cool, but is there a story in a photo of a bug? What if it's a really hot girl, though? In front of a car? That's a story. That is? Oh, no, it's a Bruce Springsteen song, but... <laughs> so, that doesn't count. It does not count. What if there's a lot of cleavage, though? Uh, I don't know. I'm talking about, like, a nice, moody, Airy, I don't know. Just tell me a story in a photo. Look at a great photojournalistic image that tells a story. That's what I'm talking about. I want to see something interesting. Although I give you a lot of crap, I am a fan of your work, but I'm thinking back to your portfolio and I don't know that your pictures tell stories. Do you? I think you go to my most popular photo of all time. I think Wake Turbulence tells a story. Okay. It tells a little the bit. story of like the planes well, leaving an airport that day. Uh, Commercialization, globalization, pollutant, po pollu pollution, okay. you know, everything. Uh, I think that, that tells a story. I don't necessarily think all of my architectural photography tells a story. I think some of it does, certainly. Okay. Um, and, but I do think that there are some amazingly arresting images that I've seen on the F-Stoppers website that do tell a story in one frame. Oh, there certainly are. Yeah. And, and there's, there's one photographer, I can't remember his name. He's won a bunch of critiques already. Is this the guy who does the miniature things? No. Because those are amazing. Those are too. amazing too. Yeah. But this guy goes out and he, he kind of creates an entire story first and then designs an entire photo shoot around the story. So it'll be like some guy digging a hole and there's like a dead body off to the side yeah, and there's a car coming about. over the hill. Yeah. or and you, like yeah. There's a lot going on in each frame. Right. So that's the type of stuff that we want to see. Yeah, and uh, it, 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 there are some people who do it incredibly well and they design an entire set and they do the fog machines and everything. I think that's really cool, so. Okay. Well, uh, if you'd like to be part of the next critique on story, go to fstoppers.com slash contests and you can go to fstoppers.com slash store and you can see the tutorials that you can potentially win, including Mike Kelly's tutorials, Where Art Meets Architecture. We've done one through three. We're working on something, something now. We don't, we know. don't know if it's going to be part of the Whamma series. We're just or... arguing every day and filming things, and we'll <laughs> sort it out later. So, <laughs> as, as we do, um, normally we give one free tutorial away to the highest uh, voted image mm -hmm. of the critique, and then one random one. Mm -hmm. People asked us for this critique to not give it to the highest rated image because they felt like people were it. sabotaging each other to oh. get the highest rated image. So I am giving you free reign. 
you get to give away two tutorials. I okay. Mean, my tutorials, or can I say, I want to give you Peter Hurley's tutorial for... They get to choose they the get to tutorials. Choose. Okay. Yeah, they get to choose any tutorial in the F-Stopper store, but you have the power. Got it. So, this is the highest rated image okay. of the critique. You can choose to give it to this one or not. Maybe I want to see everything first. Maybe you, yeah, we go to yeah. the end and then we come back. Okay. okay. Um, this image was taken by Felix Renner. Are you ready to rate this? I'm ready to rate this. One through five, right? Yep. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. Do you know what building this is? I don't. It is an impressive building, architecturally, assuming I'm looking straight up. Um, but I don't know what... Is this an attempt at fine art photography? Is this an attempt at architectural photography or commercial photography? What is the end goal here? And I cannot figure that out just by looking at the picture. Yes, it is cool. Thank you for not putting an airplane in here. Thank you so much for not putting an airplane in here. <laughs> I think I would have liked it more <laughs> if there was an airplane in it. You know it's those cliche photos before, where yeah. there's a dumb, like fo clearly photoshopped airplane in there? Yeah. Um, and it is a, it's a solid image, but I don't understand, and I don't know if there's any, can I? Yeah, so he says that this, this house, I'm sure I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, is called the Kronhauser. Mm -hmm. or crane house or crane houses right next to the Rhine River in Cologne, Germany. Their shape is an upside down L, which is supposed to recreate the look of old harbor cranes. And I guess I'm in well, the thing I struggle with here is is this a commissioned photograph for an architect? Is this an attempt at fine art? If it is fine art, what are you trying to say with it? Is it part of a larger series? Uh, I don't find the processing to be particularly compelling. There's a lot of like mid-rangey tones in here, not too much contrast. Um, but the composition is great. I think it has potential to be wonderful. I just don't immediately understand the purpose. And I don't know if that's fair or not. But I'm looking for intent. I'm trying to understand the intent. What is the intent? You know what I mean? I, I, I guess I kind of understand what you mean, but at the same time, I don't know what the intent of most building photography is besides documenting the building. And is this, is this documenting or embellishing or art or? I mean, it's black and white, so it's it art. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave this three stars. I like it okay. It is interesting, you know, certainly yeah. uh, with the reflection and everything, it, it kind of makes you think like, what the heck am I looking at right here? Yep. Um, like, I think if this was in color and part of a set of 10, it would be an amazing addition for a commission shoot by an architect. It'd be a really cool shot. But on its own, and I, again, I don't know if that's fair or not. Keep going, I'm sorry. I, I just, I don't know if I love it enough as fine art or as uh, beautiful architecture for me to say, yeah. I love it and I give it four or five stars, so. <laughs> That's probably not a great critique, but right. it's okay to me. Okay, that's fair. Okay, you have anything to say? You ready to move on? Onward. Do it. Oh, and let me, <laughs> I never was really clear about what this critique is. Uh, Mike is obviously an architectural photographer. You put light painting on the map. So you were going into these houses and flash popping a million times and then compositing the flash pops together. Yeah. You have toned down light painting in recent years, and now you will light paint if you need to, but if you can do it with natural light, you will. Yeah. You do lots of bracketing, you still do Photoshop, but less light painting. So we asked everyone mm -hmm. in this critique, you can use Photoshop, you can use natural light, you can use lights that were in the scene, but you cannot have added your own lighting. So you couldn't have come in with your own lights or your own strobe light to embellish the scene. So this shot, I mean, looks fantastic. The last shot looked like it was natural light. Right. This shot, I feel like looks awesome. I could certainly see flashes being used here to brighten up the ground and everything to give it such an even exposure. But that's apparently not what happened. Yeah. I think this is a very nice photograph. Uh, I'm ready to rate it. You already rate it? Yeah. 
Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. Um, I don't know what's up with the left hand. I think that should be cropped. There's like a sliver of something, but not enough to tell me what it is. Oh, that's interesting. I keep thinking that that's not part of the picture, yeah. and that's... That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. a little weird. Um, and I do feel like this is very bright and white, but that does not exist in real life. Walls are never that color, even if they are white. And they may pick up a lot of color cast, but I don't think that it, this, it almost feels like styrofoam or something. It's so clean. So you so think you think rendery almost. What they did was they they desaturated the walls yeah. completely and yeah. then painted back in the colored parts. Right. That makes sense. And so I think it's a very great it's a clean look, but and maybe the client wanted that, but it's not something I would do. It does sort of toe the line of rendering for me, and I would like to see a little more of nature in here. And whether that's a color cast, like there's gonna be some blue, there's gonna be some green. Don't let it overwhelm, but let it exist a little, a little bit, I'm sorry. This but, was taken by Parrish Ruiz de Velasco. Mm -hmm. And he writes a little bit about it here. He says, this shot almost didn't ha happen because it was cloudy all morning. And if it's too late in the day, we wouldn't have had that strafing light that uh, takes this shot to the next level. I completely agree. I yeah. mean, that's my favorite part yeah, it's great timing. of that image. Um, I was in the process of setting up the kitchen slash dining room and suddenly the clouds broke, the sun came out. I looked, I looked at the architect on location and he knew that I was going to ask. So we changed gears and captured the living room image pretty quickly. As soon as we finished, the clouds came back. It couldn't have been better timing. The edit was three exposures to bring back shadows and highlights. I did some color correction on the floor and the brick wall. Also have to give credit to Mike Kelly, as I learned how to do most of this from his tutorials. That's very kind, thank you. Look at that crop. Don't you feel like that cleans it up nicely? I do like that better. I do like that. It was better. a very simple crop, and we just punched in a little bit and got rid of the, the the light fixtures in the ceiling on the top. And we went halfway through the art on the left and lost mm. a little bit of floor. And I it do feels like that a better. lot a lot cleaner. Okay, cool. But thank you for the kind words, Paris. I do appreciate it. And this is this is a great picture. Um, and I'm just kind of applying my own stylistic preferences to it. If you have a look and this is what you do, keep doing it. Um, and that is something that happens pretty frequently in architectural shoots. Is something will reveal itself to you. Or you go to get a piece of gear in the other room and the light will be heavenly on the way back and you're like, stop, we gotta get this right now. Hmm. It happens pretty frequently and it's, it's, an, it's a mark of a great photographer who can see that and stop what they're doing and go capture something that they know is gonna be better. So, a very solid picture. I think the crop can be improved. I Personally, I would like to see less white, a little more natural color in here. And then I think it's a five star. Okay, next up. This file was taken by Brian Wetzel. Three, Rock, two, paper, one. Scissor. I'm in between a three and a four on this one. I yeah. definitely like the previous one more, but yeah. I like this one a lot as well. And I'm gonna say the same exact thing here. I see all this green outside, and I know in my brain that there should be some of that green showing up inside hmm. not it shouldn't and i know that like digital cameras will go way too green and overwhelm but i think there should be some of that nature being picked up on the walls again it feels like the windows are pasted in or something you get that feeling it looks I like think this they is a, are. a catalog <clears throat> shoot or whatever and you can kind of tell that there's no continuity between inside and outside so wait what are you what are you saying that you that once Don't again the windows they, look pasted in but I think they are pasted in. I mean, like a lot, all of these images are going to have windows pasted in to, to be able well, to get a like correct it's from exposure. Another, it looks like the interior was lit in a studio and then outside was pasted in. Okay, and so. for all I know, there could be a construction site outside. So you're saying that once again, they have desaturated the whites right, too far. Right, so far. They need to have just a little hint. A little bit of bleed. Okay, that makes sense. Again, that's my stylistic preference. Um, and, and I do think, I don't think this is the best composition for the room. I wasn't there. It might have been impossible to be elsewhere, but it seems like the easy way out. 
to just put the camera in the middle, line it up, and make it happen. So what hap the reason that bugs me is like, you have the, the island running into the curtains on the, about a third of the way in from the left. Uh, that's pretty tangential. Everything sort of like right over here is a little bit visually confusing. Hmm. What if you took a couple steps left? I don't think we need to see all of the fridge. A third of this picture is devoted to fridge. Why not show us some more of the dining room and all, let us see all the way down? We wouldn't lose anything by cropping the fridge. We'd still see the backsplash, still see the cabinetry, still see the island, still see the chairs, still see those windows up top. Hmm. Uh, I just think a couple steps to the <clears> left. <throat> and I think asymmetry is a marvelous, beautiful thing. I just think this is the obvious composition and you could have dug a little harder. Interesting. I, I would, I don't think I have as good of an imagination for this sort of thing as you do. Obviously they have centered themselves right mm -hmm. with this island. Mm -hmm. um, so moving over, it's kind of hard for me to imagine if I would like that more or not. I'm gonna trust you on that. Brian says, there are large windows all along the left side letting in directional light on a cloudy day. This is luminosity blend of about four photos. Is a luminosity, luminosity blend. I did have to do heavy retouching on the windows to combat the bloom and preserve the window view. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually something that I'm excited to see how you deal with because in the past, I remember what you would do is you would flash the windows. Uh, you, would, you would expose for the outside and then flash the window frames to get clean window frames, mm -hmm. but without a flash. And it sounds like you... Well, if you're photographing a home that is so big that, the, I mean, you, you can't really flash it or the windows, there's nowhere to bounce the light or something, um, it can be tricky. And I'll still use flash if it's like a nasty situation. Mm -hmm. Next up. I'm ready, you ready? Ready. Three, two, one, four stars. I love this. I feel like this looks so good. Mm -hmm. um, I would have definitely guessed that this was taken by flash popping the, uh, the house. And I also know that you like to fire flashes from the inside of a house. And it looks like that happened here. I yeah. could be wrong. Well, see the grass in the front, you know? So uh, Vladimir Ambia took this and he says, this was a house I shot for a high-end real estate agent. It's located in Houston. The house took me one and a half hours to shoot. Since I don't use any flashes, wow. I had to make sure to capture it in as much different lighting exposures throughout the evening. So I don't know if, if, it mean, if this means he photographed the exterior of this house for an hour and a half, one shot for an hour and a half, or if he the shot the house. entire the whole house. house an hour and a half. That's impressive. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's it it kind of makes me feel like he shot this one picture in an yeah. hour and a half. But I don't know. I, I think it looks <laughs> looks really good. I love the fact that you can see the neighbors' houses, mm -hmm. but this one is just glowing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I do wish. I, I do feel like it's a little bit, there's a couple nitpicks that I stylistically have. If it's twilight, the sky is a little too bright. It looks like the sun is still out mm. behind the house. And if that's the case, we couldn't see inside. And there's a bit of a, it, it is real estate photography and you can't spend eight hours on this, but the sky replacement is a little bit messy up in the top left. I didn't even notice. Oh, in the tree. Yeah. Yes. And you start, yes. And then I, I feel like the neighbor's house, because we can, it's just a cheap McMansion on either side, right? <laughs> and we see the Corvette. I love the tree on the left. And maybe the crop would get all screwed up if you cropped out the house on the right. But I do feel like that gaping car hole on the right-hand side is very ugly and could be darkened or something could be done. That's interesting. Now that you mention it, it does bother me a little bit. You but I feel like it, right? it is pretty dark, though. I mean, I'm, this, is, this looks like it's almost a daylight picture. I do feel like a heavy vignette here. Would what help. if it was like a Lamborghini and not a Corvette? Then uh, would you be okay with it? I still think those are kind of trashy, honestly. Lamborghinis? Yeah. I'm trying to... Uh, so what obnoxious. if it was a Tesla Model Y <laughs> performance? No, what about like a Volvo or like a nice, like a nice car? A Volvo! <laughs> like a nice Volvo, like an XC90. Like it's a $100,000 SUV. Is a Corvette not a normal car? It's, uh, it's not even... A, it's, like a, it's like an older one. It's like a 99 or something. You know... I don't know. Maybe of I'm weird. Of course you would say Volvo is like the <laughs> pinnacle of automotive engineering. You know, like I don't want to see Lamborghinis or McLarens in there. No. It, Volvo. It's... it's, it's this, if it's... 
I look. I don't. Th I think Lamborghinis and Ferraris and McLarens. They're just kind of flashy, and I like a little bit of a refined, mm. understated elegance. Oh, I see. You're above everyone who drives <laughs> Lamborghinis. I, I you know. Get it. Yeah. I get it. Noise polluting, flashy cars. Okay. Don't need them in my hood. All right. Next up. I love this picture. I saw this. I cheated to look. You did this. This one. I was. I was choosing the images, and you were looking over my shoulder, and you were like, "That one." I love it. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four, and it's funny. This was one of my favorites as a thumbnail. Yeah. As I see it larger, there's a few things that kind of bother me. One of them being. The, the symmetry of this chandelier, it's not centered. It's not centered, right. Yeah, and it makes me wonder. Well, here's what's interesting here. I think the composition needs a little work. I think the processing is impeccable in mm. this photo. Okay, well, Compared Melissa, to the last few, Kelsey, there's will still that. some natural color in here. Everything hasn't been sucked away. Mm -hmm. The brightest reflections of the sun are pretty much pure white, as you'd expect them to be. It's this beautiful backlighting that was very well handled. There's still color in a backlit landscape, which is very difficult to do. But then the composition is a little bit funky. It's almost perfect. Now, what could she have done? Because it's just built this way. It's, you can't move that chandelier. But like, look at where the chandelier is touching that brick wall I know, outside. It drives you know me I mean? crazy. Or where the top of those, um, the lights are kind of lost in that windowsill. You know what I mean? I think if she was an inch higher and an inch to the right, and you can, you can lie, you can take out a chair and then only have three chairs on the opposite side and pretend that you're centered by cheating them down on the right, you know what I mean? It's just a game of inches here. Hmm. It's not major, move a foot that way, move a foot this way, an inch here, an inch there. Get the lights away from the windowsill. Get the light away from that stone wall. Um, now, do you understand, uh, this, this looks like some sort of fire pit or something. Yeah. Is that movable? Because it almost looks like it just looks like all of the furniture outside is pushed to the right too far. It's not symmetrical with the doors. Yeah, and, and you can see the chair on the right is a bit further off the fire pit than the chair on the left. Now, another thing that bugs me is those planters are both empty. Yeah, it's kind of weird. say, put something in them or get them out of there. Imagine if those had nice, like, cigarette butts. topiaries in there or something, you know? Mm. Um, that would be great. And I could, I could take or leave the tchotchke in the front. I'm afraid though, if, if you take away whatever the heck you just called that pan, <laughs> and then the two things in the windows, like you're starting to lose a lot of details in this image. And now, I don't know, I'd crop in a lot. Like I, I'm wondering to myself, all this, this white, part above the top of the frame, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, crop, just crop in a little bit on there. Uh, that doesn't look right. That looks worse to me. I think it's, it's very close, but there's five things that need to move an inch. But what happens if you can't move that fire pit? The fire pit is kind of what's determining what the middle of this then shot is. If it, if it doesn't, bother me because it's so far away it doesn't bother me nearly as much as the chandelier the yeah. fire pit might be a foot off a of center but the chandelier is three inches and it feels way worse because it's closer to the camera yeah you know what i mean i could mm -hmm. live with the fire pit if the chandelier was perfectly centered and like look look at the arm of that chair on the right that's poking up but not on that side you know so it's just coming together with all these little things to go from a four to a five in my opinion uh, she says that she shot this with five bracketed images and then blended them together in Photoshop. That's some impressive blend work. Okay, next up. You ready to rate this? Yeah. Three, two, one. Four stars. We agree. Trash cans. That's it. Four to five right there. So you would really give this five stars. This is your favorite image so far. Yeah. What? Look at the, 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 the light, the natural vignetting. Look at the, 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 the light. The porky pig. <laughs> I get it. The light. I like this. I think it's super cool. I think cool. the composition is perfect. I think the light is perfect. What about the dude? I like the dude. 
I like it gives it a little bit of motion, a little bit of scale. It's huge. It feels, it feels dense and powerful. And it feels like this heavy, immense structure. It's the first photo that I've seen where I feel like I can understand the gravity and weight of the, the subject. But the trash cans, hmm. why? Is what the easiest thing to fix? Just push them out of the way. Unless they're, unless they're bolted down, then I'm sorry. They're not very easy. You did a great job. <laughs> then Photoshop them out. Um, that would be a really annoying Photoshop to yeah. do. I think. You've, you've always got these weird Photoshop. Like, I remember the first time that you truly blew my mind. <laughs> the gradient? Yeah, it was like a <laughs> gradient. And, and you were trying to take like a vent off of a ceiling or something. And I thought you no just way. can't do that. Yeah. Because if you try to, you know, do the paint thing. Yeah, it, like you'll the see these lines. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to click here and click here and create a gradient. And it just went away. And I had never seen anything like that. So maybe you could do that with trash cans too. <laughs> Sebastian says, this wonderfully designed staircase can be found in London's Tate Modern Extension. Um, the image is a composite of two images, both taken handheld. One image is the base exposure with some highlights and shadow adjustments. Um, and the second shot is just for the guy on the stairs to provide some scale. He'd probably get yelled at for moving those trash cans. Yeah, because he wasn't hired for this right. job. Yeah. Yeah, that, that <laughs> you makes gotta sense. take what you can when you're being covert. But that's interesting. So potentially a shot with maybe the least amount of work that we've seen so far is your favorite. And that is the sad reality of architectural photography. And photography in or general. Photography in general. Yeah. Like one of my some of my very dumbest pictures I did spent the least amount of time on and they are the best pictures in my portfolio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I know you know. <laughs> I know. I know. This was taken by Fleeting Pictures. That's the submitter's name. Are you ready to rate it? Three, two, one. What? I'm going five. I, I could have gone four. Not because I think it is a wonderful <laughs> architecturally commissioned photo for a client. Okay. But because I think it achieves what it set out to do. Unlike the first photo, which we both gave a three, I think this is a better <clears throat> number one. I'm trying to think of this within the context of what this photographer was trying to do. I, I, I don't get, okay, when you, maybe when you four, say stuff like that, <laughs> like, I don't... I, I'm, I'm taking a little liberty here, and I'm saying he is, this was probably not commissioned. Yeah. He wanted to create a fine art black and white image. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of pattern, lots of repetition, lots okay. of rhythm. Yeah. Gradient left to right, shadow highlight. Maybe maybe I'm over overstepping my bounds here. But I think that he Well keep in mind five stars is supposed to be like world class okay, unforgettable. Right, I'm walking this back <laughs> like a politician. I'm walking it back. <laughs> okay. You okay now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to walk back. Yeah. My uh my rating. I think it's great. So I, I was wish it was in a color. three and a four. Yeah. You wish it was in color. Really? I wish I had a figure somewhere, a person, and then mm. it would be a great architectural commission. What image. if? Sure. What if it had the shadow of an airplane going over it? Then, then it would be I, five I, stars. I faint. Six. <laughs> Six stars. It breaks the scale. <laughs> um, I like it. This is the type of image, I say this a lot in critiques. You know when you see like mediocre modern photography, but then all of a sudden you see that it was taken by a famous artist and, and it was and it sold be. for $20 million and yeah. you're like, what? That yeah. was sold for $20 million? Like, this is better than a lot of that crappy modern artwork that I've seen, but I feel like this could be in some sort of modern museum but I also, I don't know that this is technically like that amazing. incredible or difficult. Well, like we said like, in the last photo, the most technically amazing, difficult photos might not be. I know, but it's like the subject matter. I, I don't know. So Fleeting Picture says, a close-up of a currently in construction building called One Park Drive in London. Um, so it's not even done being built and he just snapped a picture. Well, you caused quite a debate regardless. So. You did, you did. Cool image. All right, next up. What Mike doesn't know is that I took this photograph in the very room that we're currently filming in on my iPhone moments before he arrived. 
All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. What? Come on! Let me explain. I don't think it is a bad image, but I think there is a lot that could be done to improve it very easily. The faucet, what's going on with the faucet? It's like kind of bent weird. It doesn't, it's not well, it's maybe that's incongruent the way the with the rest of the image. Looks. The receptacles and the plugs on the wall How could have been photoshopped out. Could have been hidden with the plant. You think the plant's not centered underneath the cabinet over here? Maybe it's hiding a receptacle right there. I don't see one. But exactly, it's done, a, <laughs> it's done its job. Why do you think this is a, a four? Now keep in mind, like Parrish and and Vladimir had fours. <laughs> okay, I, mean, not, I think this is a great, a solid picture. So then that's three. I could lower my rating to a three. Maybe you maybe come I knee to jerk too hard after the five. I don't know. <laughs> Keep going. I'm um, I, I mean, I don't know. I think there's lots of interesting lighting going on. I, I like that that cut of light. That's I under do the like cabinets. the cuts. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the interesting highlights on the chairs. I do like the, the light on the chairs. Yep. Um, I. I don't know. It looks it looks very familiar to that me. That is incredible natural light. If it is natural light. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a skylight and directional light coming at the same time. Looks like it. You Does see. it look familiar to you? You're such an asshole. <laughs> this is the kitchen right here. <laughs> I knew it was a bad picture. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're literally looking at this photo right here. <laughs> was that natural light? No. no, I knew it. No, it's not natural light. Um, I, I'll. Uh, the reason why I'm hesitating to say what's going on, I have been given a product that has not yet been released, mm -hmm. and I had to use this product. I probably shouldn't say very much, but we will put this section in that video when it comes out in a few weeks. <laughs> But uh, no, there, there was some funny business going you, on. You know this. how I recognized this? It, because I zoomed, the succulent looked blurry. Yeah. And the succulent was on the table for like four hours yesterday. And I was like, how do I know that? I'm getting a flashback. I was filming with the succulent for all, the entire afternoon yesterday. Yeah. Um, it is, it's, a, it's a good shot of a boring space. It's so funny, we're literally lit. I'm like, it doesn't look familiar to you. And you're like, yeah, I don't know. Right. It, looks, it looks like a pigsty over there. I know! <laughs> I know. Next. Next. <clears throat> this image was taken by Lars... Schalkwijk. Schalkwijk. Wijk. Wijk? Isn't that the I-J-K? That's the Dutch Ike. I don't know. Slaughterdyke. A town outside Amsterdam. Now, Lars, please tell me who's right. We have a... Um, a rule that you must write a description of how you took the image mm -hmm. or else you're disqualified. So Lars And Lars the wrote the, 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 he says, I shot this image for a designer in Amsterdam, big window from the right. Normally I would not accept that, but that may be all that's going on here lighting wise. I mean, this might truly just be kind of straight out of camera. I love the, the speckledy light coming yeah, in. I do. All right, ready? Yeah. Raw three, Eight two, precision. one. Four stars. We agree. I love this. I think the blown out lampshade is kind of distracting. You know what? I did not notice that until now, but you're right. I think it could be toned down just the littlest bit. However, I really like the composition, but is there a wider, more sort of grandiose view here? But I don't know, maybe not, uh, because the, the placement of the chairs is just sublime. I love that curve in the bottom left. Like, I wish I took this picture. Um, I don't know about the book. Would a bowl, a ceramic bowl, have gone better on the table? That's true. That book is very the book is a little strangely oddly placed. placed. And because it's not tilted towards the light, right. the cover is so it's in dark. shadow, yeah. But the, the, that slash of mottled light coming in is just the sexiest light we've seen today. Well, what about that slash on the last shot? 
As amateur slash. <laughs> All right, next up. <clears throat> this image was taken by Alexi Zozo. Alexi Zozelia. Yeah. Okay. Alexi Zozelia, right? That, that Gotta be. sounds better than what I was doing. Alexi Zozelia. <laughs> <laughs> this is such an interesting composition. I would never take this picture. Why not? Because it feels like I'm shooting in between two rooms. Mm. It's like I'm shooting, I should do a, ta a shot of the table and then I should do a shot of the living room with maybe the TV or something, but I should never shoot down the middle, like down the back of the couch. That's really weird. I want to give a half rating, but I can't. You're so not allowed. We are going to round. Okay, one, three, two, two one. I'm gonna go on four stars. Do you want to go three and a half? I was gonna give him four and a half. Oh wow! You so this is one of your favorites. Imagine if there was a model on the deck, in the middle of the frame, cutting a silhouette through that sheer curtain. Mm -hmm. How cool would that be? And because we don't see the ocean, I think it's missing something, and that might be the solution I'm looking for. And that would take it from your kind of weird composition, two rooms split down the middle. But we'd have a subject, somewhere for our mm -hmm. eyes to go that to. It would make total sense then. Right now, <clears throat> I'm not sure where, I think it's magnificently processed. I don't necessarily dislike the composition, but I do feel like Lee is right. I'm, it's an overall room shot, but what's the subject? Is the subject the cool light, the view? Well, there is no view. The living room, the dining room, it's, it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's so close to perfect, but it's a big step back from perfect because there's no, nothing for us to really want to look at. And the two subjects are far left and far right. You know what I mean? It's that little sliver of window to the left or the dining area all the way to the right. And you've got 30% of the frame in the middle. That doesn't really do much for me. Tell me about something uh, exposure-wise that makes no sense in this image. Something exposure-wise that makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Give up. I give up. There would be no way that through these sheer curtains, it would be pure white in the exposure, yet on the left side where there's no curtains, we can see the view. Well, it's backlighting the fabric. I think it's perfect. No, the sheer curtains would, would darken that view. I think it's the backlight is, it doesn't strike me as weird. Mm, because it's lighting up a white fabric. I see what you're saying. I, I guess maybe in my mind, it's very sheer. And in your mind, it's, it's denser. It's, yeah. It could, <laughs> yeah. Like but, if it's like really light, I understand. But if it's like, you know, thicker, like a dish towel consistency, you know, then maybe that's. <laughs> but if that were the case, if, then the light would not penetrate it and it would be gray. I, but I, I personally, I love the, I love the processing here. I think it feels dreamy and it may be a little rendery, but I love that peak of blue on the left. I just kind of wish there was a person out there and it would be so freaking killer or a couple like having some drinks, you know, mm -hmm. silhouetted in that fabric and then it, it would knock my socks off homepage images. So, but, but <clears throat> do you think that it's weird that the curtains go all the way across period? Well, what I mean, if there's some ugly parking lot out the window on the right, you know, I have a feeling that that's what's uh, happening. I don't think that we're looking at ocean. I think we're looking right. perpendicular to a beach. You're right. Okay. Galaxy Brain Kelly over here. All right. Uh, okay. He has a little bit of a uh, explanation here. This is an image of a great room, living slash dining at a beachfront condo, shot, shot for an interior designer, captured with ambient light only, with multiple bracketed exposures, window view cut in. Uh huh. Doesn't make sense otherwise. Lower exposure, carefully blended to bring back detail in the curtains and hardwood floor. I closed most of the curtains for a diffused glow look. So he doesn't actually say that he did it for, 
you know, uh, the view to block an ugly view, but interesting. That, that's, that's such an interesting idea that you could block the view but put somebody behind sheer curtains and make it all about like this lifestyle living by the beach when yeah. they're looking at a parking lot. Clever idea. And now if I only had the clairvoyance to do that on a shoot, <laughs> instead of just talk about it. You'd make the big bucks. <laughs> Next up. This image was taken by Fergus Floyd. I can read that name. I'll read it. This image was shot a, at a local winery showcasing the cellar door. The architect, Kirsten Thompson, Thompson, did an amazing job utilizing natural light to create an amazing space, so there was no need to use any additional lighting. This image was a, oh, this image was a blend of three exposures and another to insert the figure to show the doorway leads to the outside world. Ready? Yes. Three, two, one, four stars. We agree again. Why is the person in this photograph? Oh, really? I, I thought I really liked the image. When I saw this image, I, I, I checked because I thought you might have taken this. I thought the guy might be you. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like me, right? <clears throat> I just, you have this perfect, delicate, quiet scene on the right three quarters. And then this busy, blurry thing on the left. I mean... And my eye goes right there. You could, I could say the same thing about the last shot. Like, you have this perfectly tranquil shot with the white curtains and then, ugh, a person right in the middle of the busy but body. It, it would be sharp and defined. You know what I mean? I mean, you always blur people walking through your frames. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes they're sharp, sometimes they're blurred. Okay. But I just feel like, I, I don't, I, for some reason, my eye keeps getting pulled to the left. Yes, it and my, flows to the left. My eye wants to go down here. So, right. you know what I think I like about the person? I like the touch of blue. I feel like this image is so monochromatic, it almost feels like it's been made black and white and then they've just painted in some orange for the wood. What if he and his partner were sitting on the two stools on the far right enjoying a glass of wine underneath that spot of light? Ah, then, then, it's, then it's too much about them for me. Now I'm looking at their face, I'm looking at what they're dressed, I'm wondering about what they're talking about. I can, this, I can get that. This is better. I just feel like it's so bright over there. I don't know, I, I, I would like to see it maybe, maybe without a person it's too empty and we could debate this till the cows come home. Um, like I said, Regardless, I think it's an incredible You know incredible what I think image. I'd like to see added to this? And maybe I'm, I'm nitpicking. I know I'm nitpicking. I'd love to see a hard flash placed out the door and put up high and to mm -hmm. fire some hard light along the uh, bottom of the mm -hmm. ground down there just to make the, the, the floor look a little bit more interesting. Is that that it? is it. Okay, so that wraps up this critique. So now the uh, benevolent hand of Mike who can grant tutorial. two free tutorials. And you have to you have to talk about your thought process here. Are you giving the best images the tutorial? Are you giving it to people who you feel like could use the tutorial? What is what is your reasoning? I'm going to look for people who could benefit from the tutorial with small little things. So you're not going to give it to the best images in the no. critique? Okay. Because I don't think they need the help. Okay. I'm going to give it to this image here. Okay. So this was Melissa Kelsey gets and one free tutorial. I think it is, like I said, I think it's a fantastic image. It just needs a little tightening up. And Melissa is a wonderful person who I have actually met on the internet. Oh, you know who it is? Yeah. Oh, is that loud? Cool, sure. <laughs> I mean, but I don't know if maybe she's not. Maybe maybe maybe, or maybe not. there's a little bit of insider trading going on right now. <laughs> Call the SEC. Funding <clears throat> secured at 420. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with this guy here as well because I'm still somehow spellbound by this I'll, picture. I'll, go ahead and read that. Alexi Zozelia. <laughs> That's so good. How do you read so well? I'm a cultured. Man. Get real. <laughs> so what do you feel like, I mean, this was one of your favorites of the entire critique. What do you think this person- I just think it's, it's 
it, the, the boulder is on the precipice and it just needs a little tap to go tumbling over. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. A little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Yeah, the golf ball is on the, the edge of the, the rim of the cup. Yeah. It needs a little tap. So both of you guys, send me a private message on fstoppers.com. Let me know which tutorials you would like and I will send those right over to you. Mike, thanks so much for being a part of this boutique. That was You're fun. very welcome. Um, that kitchen over there, I thought that shot was a little it's undervalued, but it's okay. <laughs> Uh, if you guys would like to be a part of the next critique, head over to fstoppers.com slash contests right now, and you can head over to fstoppers.com slash store to check out Mike's tutorials and other tutorials and whatever we come up with in the future with Mike. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see. Bye, guys.